Last time we looked at the phrase in Genesis 1-2, formless and empty, which is the original condition of the creation. The Hebrew term, I like to say it, so I say it again, tohu v'bohu. Uh, if there's no other Hebrew that you ever learn, at least learn tohu v'bohu. It's a, it's a wonderful phrase to toss around. Uh, it's like meganoito in Greek, may it never be. Uh, you want to uh, adopt that Pauline phrase and incorporate it into your own daily conversations. But why would God create an earth that's first shapeless and empty and then shape it and fill it? Why would God go about the creation that way? Why didn't he just speak a formed and filled creation into being right in an instant? That's sometimes the way we think about creation ex nihilo. But in fact, God spends most of creation week working with pre-existing matter, matter that he's created, but he works with the pre-existing earth to shape it and to fill it. And I think the reason he does it that way is to set a pattern for human beings. Human beings are sub-creators. Human beings are made in the image of God, and we too form and fill. We shape the world into new forms, and we fill it with new things. Uh, and that's the way that we image God. And God sets a pattern for humanity in that original creation. We see this throughout the Old Testament, in, uh, both positively and negatively in a sense. Positively during the Mosaic era, when Moses sets up a new world, a new liturgical world, a new a national order for Israel, and he does it in the, using the same process that God uses in the original creation week. He does it by setting boundaries. There are boundaries between the holy space of the tabernacle and the not holy space of the common space outside the tabernacle. There are boundaries within the tabernacle, the court and the holy place and the most holy place. There's a boundary between Israel, which is the holy land and the lands outside. So the whole Mosaic order is a creation, like the original creation in Genesis 1, that depends on the formation of boundaries that separate certain sections off, that form it uh, by setting boundaries. And then by filling it, uh, the tabernacle gets filled with furniture, uh, with its furniture. Uh, the land gets filled with people and then with plants and with cities. Uh, that's, that's the formation of a new creation. The negative, uh, the negative side of this we get in some of the prophetic literature, which talks about the collapse of Israel's form and filling. It talks about the reversal of that creation process. Uh, in a couple of passages in the prophets, we have that, those two boards, tohu and bohu, together in Isaiah 34, 11 and in Jeremiah 4, 23, both of which are talking about God's judgment against Jerusalem or God's judgment against Judah. And he talks about it as a return to this formless and empty condition that existed prior. Because Israel has not maintained the boundaries that they were given, the boundaries of holiness that they established under the law, uh, the Lord is giving them over to this chaos, to this formless, formlessness and emptiness under his judgment. Uh, that's a, that is a judgment and it's a negative thing for Israel to be shapeless and empty. But it's also the, be, the first stage of a new creation. Whenever we see Israel reduced to formlessness and emptiness, we know that God, the Spirit of God, is going to hover over the waters again. He's going to hover over Israel again. And he's going to again shape Israel and fill it so that it becomes again a new creation.